Welcome my friends! In this video, we will continue discussing the unit circle, which is something that we introduced in the previous video. A term that we used throughout the previous video is reference angle, which is just a corresponding angle in the first quadrant with positive xy coordinates on the unit circle. For example, the angles 150 degrees, 210 degrees, and 330 degrees all have a reference angle of 30 degrees. The reason the reference angle for each of these angles is 30 degrees is because the xy coordinates are the same, except for they may be either positive or negative. For example, at 150 degrees, the x coordinate is negative because we are to the left of the y axis. The same is true at 210 degrees. We are to the left of the y axis, which means our x coordinate is negative. We are also below the x axis, which means that the y coordinate will be negative. As for 330 degrees, we are to the right of the y-axis, meaning that the x-coordinate is going to be positive, but we are below the x-axis, which means that the y-coordinate will be negative. The way to determine the reference angle is to measure the angle either above or below the x-axis. For example, 150 degrees is 30 degrees above the negative x-axis, so the reference angle will be 30 degrees. 210 degrees is 30 degrees below the negative x-axis, so the reference angle will also be 30 degrees. 330 degrees is 30 degrees below the positive x-axis, so the reference angle will again be 30 degrees. Let's practice finding reference angles. Let's say that we are asked to find the reference angle for 292 degrees. 292 degrees is somewhere between 270 degrees and 360 degrees, so the angle would look something like this. To find the reference angle in this case, we will find the angle as measured from the positive x-axis down to our point on the circle. We can do this by taking 360 and subtracting 292. That tells us that the reference angle is 68 degrees. 292 degrees is 68 degrees below the x-axis, and therefore 68 degrees is the reference angle. That means that 68 degrees will have the same x and y coordinates as 292 degrees, except for the y coordinate for 292 degrees would be negative, since we are below the x-axis. Let's try another problem. Let's say we are asked to find the reference angle for negative 140 degrees. Recall that negative angles are measured in the clockwise direction, so we need to measure 140 degrees from the positive x-axis in the clockwise direction. Negative 180 degrees would be here at the negative x-axis, so we must be a little bit less than that, somewhere around here. The reference angle will be the number of degrees below the negative x-axis that we are at. So we must be 40 degrees below the negative x-axis, so that means that 40 degrees is our reference angle. 40 degrees is the angle in the first quadrant that has the same x and y coordinates as negative 140 degrees, except for the signs would be switched. We would have both a negative x and y coordinate at negative 140 degrees, whereas they would be positive at 40 degrees. Let's try a problem using radians. Let's say we are asked to find the reference angle for 7 pi over 12. 6 pi over 12 would be equivalent to pi over 2, because 6 over 12 reduces to 1 over 2. So that means that 7 pi over 12 must be just past pi over 2, somewhere around here for our angle. To find the reference angle, we need to know how many radians we are above the negative x-axis. The negative x-axis would be the same thing as 12 pi over 12. 12 pi over 12 is the same thing as pi. If we took 12 pi over 12 and we subtracted our angle of 7 pi over 12, that would give us 5 pi over 12. 7 pi over 12 is 5 pi over 12 above the negative x-axis, which means that 5 pi over 12 is the reference angle for 7 pi over 12. The x and y coordinates at 7 pi over 12 and 5 pi over 12 will be the same, except for the x coordinate would be negative, since we are to the left of the y axis. Let's try another problem using radians. Say we are asked to find the reference angle for negative 26 pi over 15. Recall that negative angles are measured in the clockwise direction. Negative 30 pi over 15 would be all the way around the circle. That would be the same thing as negative 2 pi. But we don't have negative 30 pi over 15, we have negative 26 pi over 15. So that means we won't be all the way around the circle, we'll be a little bit less than that. So we'll be somewhere in the first quadrant. So negative 26 pi over 15 would look something like this. Now we have to ask ourselves, what is the angle that is in the first quadrant that corresponds to this angle? Well, this angle already is in the first quadrant, but perhaps we would like to have an angle that is not negative. So if we just added 2 pi to this, we would get 4 pi over 15. 
4 pi over 15 is coterminal with negative 26 pi over 15, meaning they represent the same angle. Therefore, the reference angle is 4 pi over 15. Typically, you would like to have your reference angle on one revolution of the circle going in the positive direction. So if you have a negative angle that happens to fall in the first quadrant, you probably want to add 2 pi to that so that you get a positive angle as your reference angle. Try not to get the reference angle confused with the coterminal angle. The reference angle is just a corresponding angle in the first quadrant with positive xy coordinates on the unit circle. On the other hand, a coterminal angle is just an angle that represents the exact same direction as another angle, which can always be found by adding or subtracting 360 degrees if you're in degrees, or adding or subtracting 2 pi if you're in radians. For example, let's say that we want to find the angle between 0 degrees and 360 degrees that is coterminal with 925 degrees. So if we're trying to find a coterminal angle, we're not necessarily trying to find an angle that is in the first quadrant. It could be, but not necessarily. We are just trying to find another angle that represents the exact same direction. How do we do that? Well, we will have to add or subtract 360 degrees so many times until we find that angle. Now, specifically, one revolution of the circle is, of course, 360 degrees. Two revolutions, on the other hand, would be 360 times 2, which would be 720 degrees. Three revolutions would be 360 times 3, which would be 1080 degrees. That means that 925 degrees is somewhere between two and three revolutions of the circle. That means we're probably going to have to subtract 360 degrees more than one time to find a value between 0 and 360. If we take 925 and we subtract 360 one time, we will get 560 degrees. So we are still not within that first revolution of the circle. If we subtract 360 again, we will get 205 degrees. 205 degrees is between 0 and 360 degrees, so this is the angle we want. 925 and 205 degrees are coterminal angles, meaning they represent the same direction. Let's try another one. Say we want to find an angle between 0 and 2 pi that is coterminal with 33 pi over 10. Well, one revolution of the circle is 2 pi. Or if we want to express that with a denominator 10, 20 pi over 10. Two revolutions of the circle would be 4 pi, or 40 pi over 10. That means that 33 pi over 10 is somewhere between the first and second revolution of the circle. If we just subtract 2 pi, we should get an angle that's between 0 and 2 pi that is coterminal with 33 pi over 10. 33 pi over 10 minus 2 pi, or 20 pi over 10, to match the denominator, will give us 13 pi over 10. That means that 33 pi over 10 and 13 pi over 10 are coterminal. They represent the exact same direction. Let's try to find an angle that is between 0 and 360 degrees that is coterminal with negative 109 degrees. Well, you can always find a coterminal angle by either adding or subtracting one revolution of the circle. In this case, we are going to have to add 360 degrees. So negative 109 plus 360 is equal to 251 degrees. That means that 251 degrees and negative 109 degrees are coterminal. They both represent the exact same direction on the circle. Let's spend some time practicing with some of the common angles on the unit circle. Hopefully at this point, you have the first quadrant of the unit circle memorized. If not, let's briefly review. At an angle of 0, we have the point 1, 0. At pi over 6, we have the point square root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. At pi over 4, we have square root 2 over 2, comma square root 2 over 2. At pi over 3, we have 1 half, comma square root 3 over 2. And then at pi over 2, we have the point 0, comma 1. We can use these angles as reference angles to help us find the points on the unit circle, either in the second, third, or fourth quadrant. Let's say we are asked to find the coordinates on the unit circle determined by 5 pi over 6. 6 pi over 6 would correspond to pi, so we must be a little bit above that at 5 pi over 6. The reference angle for 5 pi over 6 will just be pi over 6, because we are pi over 6 radians above the x-axis. The coordinates on the unit circle at pi over 6 are square root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. So the coordinates at 5 pi over 6 will be exactly the same, except the sign could be switched on either the x or the y coordinate. More specifically, since we are in quadrant 2, x is going to be negative and y is going to be positive. We are to the left of the y-axis, meaning our x-coordinate will be negative, and we are above the x-axis, which means that our y-coordinate will be positive. 
so that means our x-coordinate needs to change. We will have negative square root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half, rather than just positive square root 3 over 2, 1 half. So those are the coordinates at 5 pi over 6 on the unit circle. Let's try to find the coordinates on the unit circle determined by the angle of 5 pi over 3. So pi over 3 is right here, 2 pi over 3 would be here, this would be 3 pi over 3, or pi, 4 pi over 3 would be down here, and 5 pi over 3 would be down here. Our reference angle is going to be pi over 3, because we are pi over 3 radians below the positive x-axis. The coordinates on the unit circle, 4 pi over 3, are 1 half square root 3 over 2. That means the coordinates at 5 pi over 3 will be the same, except for the x or y coordinates could be changed in sign. More specifically here, since we are in the fourth quadrant, that is where x is going to be positive and y is going to be negative. So the only thing we need to change is our y coordinate. It should be negative rather than positive. So the coordinates at 5 pi over 3 will be 1 half comma negative square root 3 over 2. Let's try to find the coordinates on the unit circle determined by the angle of negative 3 pi over 4. So remember, since we are measuring a negative angle, we are going to be moving in the clockwise direction. This would be negative 1 pi over 4, here would be negative 2 pi over 4, so that means negative 3 pi over 4 should be right here. The reference angle is going to be pi over 4, because we are pi over 4 radians below the negative x-axis. The coordinates on the unit circle at pi over 4 are square root 2 over 2, comma square root 2 over 2. That means the coordinates at negative 3 pi over 4 will be the same, except for the signs could be flipped. More specifically, since we are in quadrant 3, both x and y are negative. Because we are below the x-axis, that makes y negative, and we are to the left of the y-axis, which is what makes x negative. Therefore, we're going to have to switch the sign on both the coordinates. So we will be at negative square root 2 over 2, comma, negative square root 2 over 2. Okay, let's try one more type of problem. It turns out that if you know the sign, either positive or negative, of two trig functions that are not reciprocals of each other, you can always determine which quadrant of the unit circle that you're in. So in this case, we are told that sine of theta is greater than zero, meaning it's positive, and cosine of theta is less than zero, which is negative. And we are asked which quadrant the terminal side of theta is in. Well, recall that on the unit circle, the y coordinate is sine and the x coordinate is cosine. If sine of theta is greater than zero, that means that y is positive. So that means we must be somewhere in either the first or second quadrant. If cosine of theta is negative, that means that x is negative, so that means we must be in either quadrant 2 or 3. So just pick the quadrant that is common to both pieces of information. Sine being positive means we're in quadrant 1 or 2, cosine being negative means we're in quadrant 2 or 3, so the place that's in common to both of those pieces of information is quadrant 2. The terminal side of theta must be in quadrant 2. Let's try another one. Say that sine of theta is less than 0 and tangent of theta is greater than 0. Which quadrant is the terminal side of theta in? Well, if sine of theta is less than zero, that means that y is negative. So that means we are below the x-axis in either quadrant three or quadrant four. Now, if tangent is greater than zero, that's a little bit more complicated. That means that our ratio of y to x is positive. Or in other words, sine over cosine would be positive. So we have to look for the quadrants where either y and x are both positive or where y and x are both negative. The only way to get a positive ratio is if both x and y are positive or if both x and y are negative. x and y are both positive in quadrant 1, so that is one possibility. x and y are both negative in quadrant 3, so that is another possibility. So tangent of theta being positive indicates that we are either in quadrant 1 or 3. But we already knew from the first piece of information that we were in quadrant either 3 or 4, so that means we must be in quadrant 3. The terminal side of theta must be in quadrant 3. Let's try one final problem. If secant is greater than zero and sine is less than zero, which quadrant is the terminal side of theta in? Well, recall that secant is just the reciprocal of cosine. Taking the reciprocal does not change the sine as positive or negative. So if secant is positive, that means that cosine will also be positive, meaning that x will also be positive. So if secant of theta is greater than zero, that means x will be positive, meaning we will be either in quadrant one or quadrant four. If sine of theta is less than zero, that means that our y-coordinate is negative. So that means we are either in quadrant three or quadrant four. The first piece of information told us we were either in quadrant one or four, and the second piece of information told us that we were either in quadrant three or four. So the quadrant in common is quadrant four. 
the terminal side of theta must be in quadrant 4. Alright my friends, that finishes this video practicing some of the ideas related to the unit circle.